marshmallow half and appearance. Look at this. No, 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 no. See, don't oh, don't touch sorry. it because then it's gonna. Oh. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I got marshmallow on <laughs> your, your microphone. This is I have the hair. What the heck? Where did this come from? It probably came from the boom. Ah, you're right in my head. Exactly right. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm James Palmer at Sun Outdoors in Austin, Texas, and I'm with actor and content creator Christy Carlson Romano, and this is Campfire Combos. Cheers. Let's Easy do a peasy. cheers before we get into it. I love that. Though. What I'm curious about is we're here in Austin. This is my like first time in Austin, not just going for barbecue, but to actually spend an evening. Um, and spend some time here. What brought you here? Because you're like a newbie, essentially, yeah. to Austin. Oh, yeah. What brought you here? Because you were like, oh, I'm rocking Broadway in New York. I'm going to LA, and right. I'm living in LA. Let's go to Austin. Right. Why? Why not? Texas, specifically Austin, felt like a really authentic move for me and my family. It was a completely personal choice. I drove through it one time when I drove cross country and I have a cousin here, through marriage actually, and he's the chillest, nicest guy. He is so Austin, his love, and he stacks up rocks. And that, that, that's like his hobby, and he's like a visual artist at a high school. Okay, teacher. I'm glad you added the second part, because at first I was like, oh, he sounds, he stacks rocks. That's neat. <laughs> but then you said visual artist, I was like, okay, that's No, a no, no, he's like a teacher, okay. but he's a hippie, and uh -huh. he would probably admit it to you. But like, that is Austin, like he believes in keeping Austin weird. And so when we had visited, I was stunned that it was so green mm -hmm. and so hilly and that the water was all around you and that the people were so nice and the Tex-Mex and the queso was amazing. And that was five years before I moved here. And while you're here, this is where we've seen this like, I don't know, this YouTube channel, this creative yeah. control, this, yeah. this content that you're pumping out. <laughs> yeah. Um, but to me, when I'm on your channel, I'm looking at it and uh -huh. I listen to you talk about it and things like that. You guys seem to know more about YouTube than anybody. I have to. I have to know the algorithm. It, it, it's, it's my business. Yeah. You know, I'm not doing traditional production. Um, I've done produ traditional production. I've produced, I've directed. It's something I'd like to do. But if you're not going to get the financing and you're not going to get the opportunities and you're not one to wait around, because, you know, I am 37. Mm -hmm. And I'm sick of waiting. I'm sick of being told no, and YouTube is an opportunity to do what you want. It's the one of the one of the freest forms of internet. I feel like. Yeah. That being said, there's there. I do have to know the algorithm to understand how to use it, mm -hmm. manipulate it. I yeah. feel like people don't do like people just think. Well, I can just get into YouTube, and I'll just right. open some toys uh, with a camera on me, and and my channel's going to explode. But I think that's right. the point I was getting. Like I feel like there's so much more to it. Is it is a business. It is what you're doing. Sure. So give me a cheat code, Christy, how to get my YouTube channel going because it stinks. <laughs> it's solely just my son dressed as Batman running around. So Wait like, a minute, hold on a second. There is a channel in that. What are you talking about? Well, no, That's the, crazy. Think, you might want to come to us. Up the, you know, call the up the Rooney family. And be like, listen, how are you guys breaking this? How are you guys breaking this? Yes. Down? You're right. You're yes. right. So now let's go towards like your days at Disney we all know about, but I want to know about like kind of like some side parts of it. Sure. What I'm curious is when you do like even Steven, or, or, you know, and how, how you go through sure. the process. Yeah, yeah. How long was it when you shoot it to when, like, they wait to see how the marketing's gonna go and how all of it's gonna go? I'm assuming their process is more deep than any, anybody else. Definitely. So even Stevens was actually uh, almost laid to waste because early testing was poor. Mm -hmm. In fact, the pilot episode, which showcased mostly Shia LaBeouf's character as a young boy, did not pull well with the demo, which was mostly tween girls for Disney okay. Channel. Okay. And they, they made it a co-star situation. Mm. So then it became me and him. And in some ways, um, our show was new in the way that it was being done as a hybrid comedy children's show that was similar in tone to like Malcolm in the Middle. Mm -hmm. 
And so it was highbrow humor, yep. and it had elements of slapsticky comedy and you know stuff like that that really worked well for the channel. Yeah, for sure. What I'm, this is the most important question. Yep. Do you get into all the Disney parks for free for the rest of your life? Does that is that part of any sort of contract that you could have signed when you were doing Kim Possible or even seeing? Can you just walk into a Disney park with the family? No. Come on. <laughs> Are you serious? Oh. You're so sweet. So you should. You know how many You're people walk in, own the place. You know. <laughs> I actually Kim Possible had an amazing ride at Epcot that they refurbished into Ugh. a Phineas and Ferb ride. Good play on words. I guess, yeah. and, and it was, you know, but it doesn't make sense because it's Epcot and you have to save the world with Kim Possible, right? But It fits Epcot. Yeah, it a fits Epcot. world it was, in the middle of the lake. You're saving the world yeah. with Kim Possible and there was pop out things that were, they literally built into it and I, I didn't go and I didn't ride my own ride at Walt Disney World. Oh. And, and, and well, no. To be fair, nobody nobody offered me to go. I know, which but is okay. But I could have. I don't know. I should have gone. My my last Disney question about those two shows is: Is being a, a voice <laughs> actor like the the greatest thing in the world? How many days do you work? How often do you, do you wear sweatpants? What what is the yeah. voice actor life? Because it feels to me like it would be the world's greatest job. It is a lot less stressful than showing up to set, being on it, you know, for 12 hours. Mm -hmm. You essentially, it is, however, very competitive. It's competitive. Yeah. I, I'm not working as a voice actor as much as I really would like to be because it, the work is so rewarding. Yeah. Um, but, but you do audition quite a lot. And there's, what I like about the audition process for voiceover is that it's not personal. It's yeah. just your voice wasn't the right fit. There was something else and it was a cartoon a and point. they match it up and it's just not personal. And so, you know, I will say that it is a small group of people, but those people are zeroed in to what it means to be a voice actor. There are people who have um, like, like a Robin Williams, like they, you put them in front of that microphone and they go off yep. and they are fascinating to watch. I can't profess that that is my main talent. You know, you sound great right now. Oh, thanks. I can. I've done quite a lot of books on tape too. Mm -hmm. I worked a lot in um, in like Audible. I started to get into some of the uh, romance novels. Oh. Uh huh. I had to go under a pen name. Christy. What was it? The what romance it novels. <laughs> wow. What was my pen name again? I don't know. Oh man, I don't remember it. Well, most we'll never people know. Use, most people use their middle name in the street they grew up on. I heard. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be the old joke. What was the name? Anyway, we'll have to get I to did it. some I did some of those. And then I decided, you know, I was pregnant. I didn't want to be, you know, doing romance novels in the audiobook <laughs> world. Something didn't feel right about it. <laughs> I can tell. I get it. Yeah, being yeah. a voice actor is fun. I'm, it's still a dream of mine. And someday maybe it'll happen. You have happen. a great voice. I think I have a very good voice. And I can do, we won't do voices. But anyway, we'll move on. So you know what I really want? What? No, I want a s'more. Oh, you are the best at segues. I have seen many a cooking show on your channel. Mm -hmm. So since this is a food-oriented segment, yes. I'm going to let you take the reins. <gasps> I'm honored. Because you're, f I mean, like, it would be like me saying, like, hey, Tiger Woods, check out my golf swing. You know, I mean, <laughs> I don't want to do that. So I'm going to have you lead us here. Lead us in into the recipe? Yes. Hey guys, today we are here and we are making s'mores. And look at this delicious little box of goodies that we have, wouldn't you mm -hmm. say? Oh, I'd totally say. What do you think we have here? Oh, we got some uh, chocolate down uh -huh. the middle, mm -hmm. goes in and out with some marshmallows, strawberries on both sides, just to keep things a little bit healthy. Yep. We got the raspberries yes. or schnozberries, as I like to call oh, them. Oh, you call them schnozberries? I do. Why do you call them schnozberries? Because I'm obsessed with Willy Wonka. He's okay. kind of my hero. Really? He's also your very hero? evil, but yeah. Okay, so here you go. I guess we'll um, we'll start with this. We'll, let's I'm gonna get start a with a cracker. You start with a cracker, okay? I mean, this is just a setup. Right. With okay. Some chocolate. It's like that. Oh, you do like the full amount. Um, um, yeah. So that it be. really is ooey gooey. Yeah. Ooey when gooey, it melts. Ooey gooey. Got it. Is. See, I, I like yeah. a little less, and I even break up the chocolate. Right. So that it can have more of the ability to melt in proportion to how many marshmallows you're putting on it. Okay. Like, I'm just doing this so you don't have to hold everything. Oh, no, I don't care. I mean, we'll just and put I'll it do, here, right? Yeah, and I'll do, and I'll do one That's more. That's okay. okay. This is a long enough stick. <laughs> Let me just 
roast the marshmallow on the campsite next to us. Oh, so. my God. I'm doing two, by the way. Double dip, I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you ever go camping as a child? Interestingly enough, I didn't do a lot of things that a lot of kids did. I, I learned to ride a bike because I had a callback for a commercial, you know. <laughs> That's but different. I tried to catch up a little bit in my in my 20s. So like the first time I remember camping was when I decided to go on a like a girls surfing trip. We we rented a, a beautiful camp that was right on the beach and it was like a beautiful evening and then you can hear the waves as you're asleep so you're basically That's pretty money right there it was it was wonderful because then you can go down to the beach and there's absolutely no one there mm -hmm. and take a gorgeous nighttime uh walk okay i thought you were gonna say nighttime swim i thought of being christy from jaws oh no did See? not work out well I just, there you go just help, like... right. how is it how is it good See, oh, I don't need yeah. all that chocolate. I just need a little bit. You want to get a, You want to get it in here? Watch this. Watch this oh, with yeah. the food content. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now mm. we get the nice. Hold on. Hold on. See that? All right. This is prettier than mine. And now we smush it for camera. Mm -hmm. This is what I had to learn. You know. Hold on. Smush. Smush. Wow, that is really good. All right. Now. Not really perfect. Now I'll eat it. Now I'll eat it. Maybe I shouldn't have. I'm all over the map. Where's your favorite place to camp? I live in Colorado, so Rocky Mountains. Oh, wow. I, would say. I really like to climb 14ers. What's a 14er? So there, any peak that's over 14,000 feet, most of them in Colorado, can uh, you can climb. So okay. you get out and you camp, and then uh, you get up you know, right first thing in the morning and uh, summit, and then come back to your campsite, pack everything up, and head out. We do that a lot. And uh, yeah, because there's still snow at the top of a lot of these. That's right, even in the summertime. It's yeah. beautiful. There's a couple that I've done. Um, let me see, Mount Massive, which is the second highest peak in Colorado, no big deal, uh, ended up this, doing this thing called glaciering, where you slide down a glacier on your feet. That's dope. Yeah, and that was a quick way to get down. That's awesome. Not the safest. Would no. you do that with your son? Lord, no. Okay. Uh-uh. He's now, not doing since, that yet. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, But what? he loves to camp. My husband wants to take the girls camping, but I'm more of a glamper. Well, we got know? glamping here. What? The, where? There's glamping here. You mean like right here, where yeah, we are? Right it's like a glamping. There's glamping. What I really like about the idea of camping, I even have a whole Pinterest board dedicated to, to camping. So you have a Pinterest board dedicated to camping? Yep. Because you don't really camp. But this is in preparation yes. of camping. This is in anticipation for my eventual trip of the camping. Yeah, you're not type A at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a dreamer, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm a dreamer like is it. what I am. I have a vision. So, you know, you try things, and sometimes they don't exactly. work out. Exactly. That's the whole point of Smart Talk. You try different <laughs> things. Let's get to some rapid-fire questions. But first, I'm going to need a wet nap. Okay. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Thanks for hosting. You did a good job. You did a great job. <laughs> All right, Christy, I have cleaned up my fingers. As you can tell, they're not sticking to this card. Mm-hmm. And this card means we are going to do some rapid fire questions. Cool. Okay. Oh, very subdued. Cool. Like you're ready for this. Like you're not even concerned or worried. I actually think I'm post s'more uh, coma. Dig it. Okay. So we're starting off on a great note. Camper or glamper? Glamper. Yes. Exactly. Yes, sir. Austin or L.A.? Austin. How about Ren or Kim? Oh man, that's like choosing your children. Okay, choose your child. Which one uh... of your two children do you prefer? Kim. Or Kim. 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 Yep. You okay. feel more of a Kim. Today. Some days I'm a Ren, some days I'm a Kim. Kim. Today I'm a Kim. Wow. It's a luxury that you get to do that. We talked about the cooking. If you have one dish to make before your demise, yes. what is the dish you are making? Um, something that we make in my family called Love Pasta that my husband and I cool. created. It's just bolognese, but the way that we make it is is just really great. And How often do you guys own. make it? Whenever we fight, which is not often. <laughs> That's tremendous. A makeup dish. I'm it's a, a love pasta. A love pasta. Yes, yeah, so it's good to have. Was there enough room for Jack on the door? <laughs> is that really on the card? Yeah, it's one of my favorite questions. No, it's not. People. It's not on the card. Was there enough room I can't see for that Jack? You know that. On the, we did talk about our age. <laughs> Was there enough room for Jack on the door in Titanic? No, because I just think I think their I think their organs were shutting down, and so I don't think he had the strength to pull himself up, even if she uh, for was, a second time. They were on death's door, literally. Well, she lived a great life afterwards, so she he wasn't entirely on death's door. He wanted Rose to go on, have kids. 
make memories. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody has a different opinion of that one. Uh, I think there was room. What do you love more, tea or coffee? Oh, coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Disney or Nickelodeon? Oh, Disney. What's your favorite Disney princess? Belle. She's the literate one. <laughs> the literate one. <laughs> I mean, I love that. What is your favorite Disney ride when they do let you in the parks? Um, going for right now, the merry-go-round with my daughter. Uh, as we close this out. Okay. <clears throat> What is your go-to karaoke song? Barracuda. Really? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Would you like to give a couple of bars of Barracuda? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Has it always been Barracuda? Ooh, Barracuda. No, I'm good. That was perfect. <laughs> All right, it is feet to the fire time, even though they've been there this entire time. But this is when we're gonna get deep. Christy, are you ready? I'm ready. What I'm curious about is your young experiences with your mom, now to where you are with your mom, and now you have daughters that are young. Mm -hmm. What did you learn through your relationship with your mother about your relationship now as a mother? Okay, so you and I are the same age. Mm -hmm. You've probably lived a million lifetimes, met a million people. I mean, in talking to you, I know that you just, you have this amazing viewpoint on sports. And I've lived a million lifetimes in the entertainment industry, yep. and I have a unique perspective on what it means to be a child actor. With me, um, as a millennial, I'm noticing the trend of generational trauma. Okay. And a lot of people that are like us who are now parents who've grown up in competitive industries and have hit high marks and have done amazing things, are trying to slow down and sort of look at what it means, the impacts and the consequences of parenting in certain ways. Sensitive parenting is sort of the, the term that's being thrown around a lot mm -hmm. that essentially <clears throat> honors the child's autonomy. But you're raising a child who knows their self-worth my mom didn't quite understand that, and I would tell that to her face. So if she were to see this, I would tell her. I've always felt that pressure, you know, to perform for her. And, and it was really wonderful to be motivated when the motivator was your, your you know, right there and, and rooting you on, and the wins that we had were so big. And the losses that I suffered as a child and throughout my teen and in way worse and compounding in my 20s and everything, they were so big. They were so importantly bad. At some point or another, I lost track of what my value was. And the external validation became very toxic. And as a female in Hollywood, there's predatory forces around you. I'm not playing victim, it's just the truth. Mm -hmm. And you start to just not see clearly. You've been very open about saying you're a people pleaser. And that's like a big thing about you, right? Like you just, you, you, you want to please those around you. Like, do you think that type of mentality compounded maybe some of the things, if you, you know what I'm saying, uh, of your experiences because of your wanting to always please? I think that you can be a people pleaser, but you have to have the concept of boundaries mm -hmm. ingrained in your heart and your mind and know that you can say no and that that's not a reflection on who you are as a person or you know, I didn't get that concept, and I, I, I would do things without accountability. So essentially I became, you know, it's, it's that generational trauma of like, if I wasn't shown boundaries, because my mom didn't really have some of those skills, and she didn't teach me that, then I'm not gonna, you know, either I, it stops with me, and I start, you know, being sober, living an authentic life, moving to Austin, taking it a day at a time, I don't know. It's just, it's just kind of who I am now. I love it. I embrace it. Yeah. It's a lot to unpack. It is. And, and you mentioned, like, you know, in that kind of how you look out for those coming after you. And I know I've, I've read where you've said, you know, you'd love to mentor, like, younger, you know, Disney or whoever it is, child stars, I, I, yeah. to kind of know, maybe, right? And is that kind of down the same path? What I'm curious is, like, with that, and you said you kind of, did you lose? Millions? So, or well, um, money wise? I made, I made and I spent a million within a year. And 
that million could have been millions had I invested it properly, right? Yep. And so the problem is, is that financial fluency isn't taught to these kids who are making extreme amount of money mm -hmm. at an early age. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, so and what do you spend it on? Like what? <laughs> You're saying what did I spend my money? Yeah. Life? Did you not see? On I know YouTube? there's a crystal that was 60k. I know that was a, a situation. Oh my but, god, that's but my like, greatest what, shame. But <laughs> and you've been very open about it, which yeah. is which is brilliant. You have to laugh about and it. You it's have just, to. I actually had like my my agent and my um, business manager and my lawyer call me on the phone. They're like, "Are you sure you want to make this purchase?" Because I had to get the money. And they were like, are you sure you want to do this? And I was like, yep, yep, absolutely. I'm going to get this. And I was like sober, actually. I remember I was in the gym and I was like, I'm going to get Just it. buying crystals. I, I, I'm going to buy it. I know it's expensive, it's a, but it's something I want to do for me. And like in my head, it was their therapy. Mm -hmm. Was the most any of them said, are you sure you want to do this? Or did any of them say anything further no, than that? No, like, that's all they said. They didn't actually said. go I'm like, assuming hey, if you're help, you should go to this. Yeah, you should be like, Let's just, you know, let's just table this for a minute. Yeah, nobody said that. This is a $60,000 crystal. They made the call, but it was like they made it half-assedly. They didn't really care. They made, I guess they cared enough, but it seems like one may have cared more than another one or... Yeah. I don't know. I, I didn't really, I, I didn't really have a lot of guidance at that point in time. So is there, before we finish, is there a, any bitter feeling towards the industry? Or is there a piece for how everything has transpired? I'm super happy to have a healthy distance from LA mm -hmm. here in Austin. It gives me that ability to heal from, you know, being a female in Hollywood um, at a young age and like that whole transition. It didn't, it didn't exactly propel me. But then again, I did leave, right? Like I went to college I didn't just hang in to LA right after even Stevens mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, need to be famous because it wasn't life or death for me like it was for, say, Shia LaBeouf. Shia came from an abusive household, which he tells people, it's not news, and um, he needed to become a star. That was his only way out of that situation. And that was intense to see and to be a part of, even just remotely be a part of that. I didn't have the stakes like that. And if anything, I was running towards what I thought was the healthiest thing for me, which was, you know, normalcy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if anything, I have bitterness that I didn't have mentorship. Mm -hmm. And I want to put forward mentorship into the world for young people, boy, girl, whoever. Mm -hmm. Like, I believe mentorship is super important, and, and, and I want to advocate for that kind of, you know, that kind of thing to exist in, in and around the industry. I just... It's just going to be like the it. hardest No, 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 question. no. <laughs> it's... Where is the crystal? Shut... You up. still have it? <laughs> I'm curious! I never got it! What?! That was the whole point. It was a ruse. Isn't that horrible? Oh, that's just the meanest thing I've ever heard. At least you could, like, tangibly hold the crystal. No, I didn't get a crystal. What I got was a lifetime of shame and embarrassment. <laughs> you gotta laugh about stuff, you know? You, you really to. do. You There's, have to. If you, like I said, if you can't find value in all of the mess ups in your life, what, what's the point? Yeah. Are you gonna just wallow and, and be a victim to it? No, you gotta, gotta sack it up. You got to. And be like, I f***ed up. Yep. It's got okay. to. Well, if you want to mentor anyone, there is a nine-year-old boy with a lot of gusto in Denver, Colorado, that has his own YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And he's dressed as Batman in most of the videos. A certain adult figure plays the penguin a couple of times in his tuxedo. That's amazing. Thank you very much. That's amazing. Uh, I'm not that versatile. I'm penguin in almost all of them. But <laughs> if you want to mentor him and his channel, please do so. When you go home, maybe steer some of those, you know, hundreds of thousands of subscribers over to his channel that he would, he would really like I that. Will. What, maybe what, I will. What is your one quick piece of advice for him and his little YouTube channel? Just have fun. He's doing that. Go. Another one. Um, I think he's very lucky to have you as a dad. Oh, my God. Mercy. <laughs> this has now been wonderful. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm so glad you feel that way. I have had a blast. This has me been, too, right? This has been a great night. Thank you for taking me out and of... Glamping of, you for a sense. This, I was glamped. Uh -huh. I was glamped really hard. Glamptastic.
Well, this fire's about to die. I hope you enjoyed this episode, though, of Campfire Combos with Christy Carlson Romano. Now, click the link below to subscribe and learn more about Sun Outdoors with their RV sites, vacation rentals, and amazing on-site amenities.